Hi everyone, it's Nicola Dorier. Uh, the goal of this podcast is to teach you how to contribute to BTC Pay Server, which is very easy. I'm assuming that you successfully installed either Visual Studio 2017, as on my computer right now, or Visual Studio Code. Uh, you can develop on Windows, Linux, or Mac, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm assuming as well as you installed the .NET Core SDK that you can find on Microsoft websites. And I'm assuming as well that you installed uh, Docker and Docker Compose on your environment. So when you clone a uh, BTC Pay server and you open the main folder, uh, what you will basically see is two projects. One is like the main project where there is all the code and the test projects. Both of them during development time depends on a bunch of dependency. Luckily for you, I package all the dependency inside Docker images and inside the Docker compose file, which means that you don't have to set them up manually. If you want to start contributing, the first thing you need to do is basically to start the Docker compose of the test project. So in the test folder, you open the command line, so you can do in bash or PowerShell, whatever. And you can, you can run like docker compose up dev. So when you run this, uh, it's basically creating uh, under the hood, Bitcoin D, Litecoin D, uh, LND, C lining, uh, and plugging everything together correctly. Okay. It basically set up your whole environment as well as, and uh, Postgre uh, dependency. If for some reason you want to reset your development environment, you can stop the container by doing control C. Uh, you can do two times, you can kill them, if you don't really care. And uh, if, if, so if you want to remove everything, you, do, you type docker compose down dash dash V. So doing this will just like remove all the, all the data uh, from your development setup. So I'm doing it right now and I will just run again uh, Docker Compose up dev to have a clean environment. Okay. So once it started, you will be able to directly run tests and debug inside BTC Pay. So when you build the, the solution, uh, you will start seeing the test suites uh, appearing on, the, on, on, on Visual Studio. Uh, if you have Visual Studio code, you need to install the unit test uh, extension. I don't really remember which one it is, but it's very easy to find out. And here I wait, it's starting. Okay, my dependency started. So from here, actually, you can just directly run the tests. Uh, we'll do it later. But more, more importantly, you can start to debug. So as you can see, I, if you are using Visual Studio 2017, you can right click on your project, set a startup project. So you see that here, set a startup project. My project is like in bold. So you can see the main project. And when you run, you, you, you can just start running, you know, the, the project by, uh, so in Visual Studio 17, it's, uh, uh, 2017 is F5 to run debug or like here start debugging and it will basically start BTC pay server uh, with the debug profile. So it will run on rec test. So let's wait a little bit. So it starts a while the first time after normally it's a, a bit, a, a bit faster. Uh, I definitely need to work to optimize this, but then you can see that you have your uh, rec test BTC pay server running on. So because it's rec test, it means that you can as well uh, mine blocks if you want. Uh, so in the test project, there is a bunch of utility like Docker, BTC, Bitcoin CLI, PS1 and, and SH if you are using Linux. So just to show you, you can quite easily just uh, generate new blocks. So Docker, Bitcoin CLI, for example, generate one. It's just using RPC under the hood. And like here I run a block uh, and you can see that my BTC pay server received it, you know? So like you can very easily like do whatever you want with your environment. And here it's my main page. 
So let's try, I will create a new account. First account, as you know, uh, is administrator. So I register my account and uh, right now imagine that you want to change one page. I don't know, for example, instead of welcome to BTC Pay server, you want to remove the space here or whatever you want. You just have to, uh, to find the right file and edit it and you don't have to recompile the whole code. So for example, this file, the main project, I think it's uh, the, the, the name is called home, home.cshtml. So you can, you have a shortcut, it's called CTRL plus T. It works on the Visual Studio code, I think, and as well as v on Visual Studio 17. And you can type what you're searching. So I think mine is like home.chhtml. So you can find it here. It will open the file. And for example, if I want to, uh, I don't know, remove the space here, you know, like you remove the space, you save, you refresh the page and you're good. By doing this, you have like very rapid feedback. If you are doing like some kind of HTML or, or JavaScript or like CSS developments, you can, you can go very fast. If for example, you, you are interested to step by step in the code. So for example, let's take an, an example, like in the invoice view, like you have this main page, actually the, the name of this page is list of invoice, list invoice. If you want to discover it a bit, you can see in the folders of BTC Pay, you have a place where I think it's called views. Yeah, I can see like in the folder view, you have all the, you know, CSS HTML. So it's HTML file that I'm using. You can find it here. Or if you basically know the name, you can do control T and like my page, I know it's list invoice, list invoices, and you can easily find the page. Most likely the name of the page is the same as the name of the action that is fired when you run the, the action. So like if I go, I search list invoice, you can see it here that I have a method that is called list invoice. You can go here and if I put a breakpoint and I try to redo the page, you will see that I'm basically stopping into it. Uh, so I can like see what's, what's the term, I, what are the parameters and everything I can step through, like going into the second line, like doing whatever you want. So it's very handy and it just work as it should. I will stop this uh, debug session for now. The second thing that you can do is running all the test suits. So like you can run all of this and it will, it will just work. So like an example, if I want to run the test that different state of the invoice are correctly, correctly processed. Okay, so uh, first time it takes a bit of while to run the test after it, it go it go faster. Okay, it's running. In, in BTC Pay, there is a kind of uh, testing framework that I created that allow you to easily like create a new user, uh, register a new store, doing this kind of things. So like if you, if you take the time to read the test, it's very easy to follow. So I'm running it. This test, I think, takes a, takes a while to finish because it's doing a bunch of stuff. While it's running, actually, you can see that stuff is happening because when you look at uh, the Docker Compose dev, you can see that some blocks get mined time to time, uh, which means that the test basically is executing. Okay, the test is finished and passed. When you, you click on the test, you have the, you can go and see the output, see how it goes with all the timing. For example, this test took lots of time to finish. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so I will copy, copy it in, in another text, uh, text to see, for example, why it took one minute. Actually, I, it, it should not, I uh, know. Ah, so here there is a timestamp. So you can see that between these two phase, there are lots of time passed out. So like, for example, you can very easily uh, debug all that stuff. I will, I will take a look at that later. And of course, uh, you, you, you can very easily debug the test. So you can just put a breakpoint, right click, debug selected test, and that step in, uh, it just works.